Once upon a time there was a studio called Core Design, a studio that made a lot of very interesting and very diverse video games until they made one fateful game. That game was Tomb Raider, it was a colossal success to the point where for many years the studio would make nothing else. Well, mostly nothing else, they also made a few other games but not really at the same rate or the same diverse palette of video games they used to create back in the early 90s. And when it seemed that Lara Croft had finally given up the ghosts and been crushed to death in the last revelation, Core Design began work on a game called Project Eden. It was a strange mix for its time of third-person shooter, action-adventure, and puzzle game, though you can probably cram puzzles into an action-adventure, that's a given, but it was meant to be, uh, or at least it was delivered as being a sort of cooperative experience either between your characters or between you and other people, because this was a game that you could play online in co-op with up to four people all together trying to solve the puzzle of traversing a level, each using a unique character that had a unique set of skills that they had the best use to figure out how to get out of a level. One that took place in a very interesting world in the far future when humanity built upwards and upwards with cities that reach towards the heavens and depths that are left abandoned, unclaimed almost, by civilization. Places that have reverted to, well, what humanity becomes without humanity. Also, you're gonna kill a lot of dogs because it wouldn't be a core design game if you didn't shoot some helpless animals for no reason. You could have at least tased them, but no, murder. Project Eden probably isn't necessarily one of the best remembered video games ever made. I mostly remember it because of the way it looked. Simply put, to me, it looked amazing. The characters were simple in design in the sense that they all had that armor on them, but it had a clean aesthetic to it that made the game look actually amazing. And to be honest, the character work on the main characters, pretty much only the main characters, still looks amazing now 17 years on. The levels, well, they, they do have some interesting bits to them, but for the most part they're... Um, yeah, the ones I've managed to play through, I mean, because uh, due to time constraints and needing to do other stuff on the PC while playing it, I didn't actually get to um, finish it. And um, one of the reasons why I couldn't finish it is because... <sighs> Here's the thing, I, I played the demo of this game 15 or so years ago. I remember it intriguing me. I remember it making me think, whoa, this is a strange kind of game, you control multiple characters, it's like commandos. But in third person, you can even switch to first person. Wow, this is this has potential, it's a school. That's what I remember uh, about me playing the demo. I'm not sure if that's what actually I was feeling about the demo then. It's just what eventually settled into my mind about the demo. Having played the game now, which is available on GOG for the low, low price of around uh, 5 euros and 20 cents, you can probably find the link in the description, it um, perhaps maybe is not as enjoyable. Not saying it's not good, I'm saying it's not as enjoyable as maybe I had made it up to be in my head. As a cooperative game and multiplayer, I can totally see this working. It would be like Portal 2, but with four people. Yeah, it would take some coordination and probably more than you could really muster. Well, you did have text chat in the game. It was had multiplayer, like regular multiplayer with deathmatch and even some races with some little tanks. But if you played by yourself in single player, well, it's not really like Commandos, it becomes more akin to Lost Vikings. And I know what you're thinking, wait a minute, Lost Vikings was kinda cool, kinda great. This game's great, isn't it? Well, I, I like where you're going with that idea. I went there as well. It kinda isn't. It's kind of annoying to play. And for the most part, it's because of its over-reliance on uh, the kind of puzzles that require you to separate your party constantly. Because every character has a different set of skills that they've acquired through, uh, I forgot what Liam Neeson said in Taken, they and they alone can do certain things, mostly involving placing their hand on a thing. It only activates for them because only they can open a door or only they can hack a thing. The hacking, okay, that, that I get. Why the opening of the door? Okay, because Carter is the commander, sure. J just give other people access. Access. They're in your team. Don't hog it all. God damn it. The game mostly descends 
into one puzzle. The one with the goat, the wolf, and the cabbage, and the boat. Because you have to get everyone to a certain place. Not all of them can go through the same ways, because, well, one of them's a robot and is immune to fire and gas and can go through places that are scant. And you have to make sure which goes through where. And that when they get there, they can use their skill to properly deal with the thing. Thankfully, the levels are built in such a way that there are sort of loopback elements that allow you to unlock previously blocked doors so that people that could not get through the long way can get through the short way now. You also have a rocket launcher on one of your characters, so you think a door would not be an issue, but it somehow is. I mean, the, the first puzzle in the game, it, it kind of stumped me actually a bit. There is a locked door in front of you. There's a door, it's a door with a window on it. My first reaction, okay, gonna shoot a rocket at the door, and uh, when the uh, door collapses, or the, the window on it collapses, I'm gonna unlock it from the other side. No, what I was supposed to do was uh, shoot a window from a skylight, drop on a beam through that sky and then on the ground and then go around the other way and there was even a valve there I don't remember what the valve actually did I ah, never mind and then I was supposed to unlock the door from the other side by going down there as first puzzles go it's a kind of a dumb one because all I did was take the long way instead of blowing up a door I already committed vandalism by blowing up the skylight what's a door compared to that and a lot of the puzzles are like that the ones I've encountered because I have not finished this game, I've been unable to finish this game because how should I put this? Were it just four characters, I think it could have worked. With four characters, yeah, absolutely. It would have been the kind of game that okay, may it may have had some some annoying bits with going to get characters, with them getting lost when you tell them to follow you, with not sticking to you. Okay, not as much of an issue. I mean, they can die and you instantly be respawned at the last checkpoint. You you don't have to reload a save, they will just be teleported and revived at the checkpoint, so you can use that to fast travel if you need to. Uh, that would have worked. But you also get drones, a little tank thing that I said you can use in the multiplayer races, and the flying one. And, and that's up until where I got to. Effectively, you've got at least six characters, and you have to do the uh, goat, wolf, cabbage, boat puzzle with six of them. It gets annoying. It gets super duper annoying really, really fast. And one reason it does get annoying is, well, I guess the characters have different abilities and you're not entirely sure which one of them you have to use on what thing until you get close enough to the thing to tell that they need a certain character for it. Also, there's some pixel hunting involved with the um, with the things you have to interact with because they have a really small interaction. With, they're made to be a bit realistic where your character actually has to put their hand on a thing, has to actually touch a thing, and that doesn't translate well with sort of informing you what, uh, what they are or where. This... It's maybe because I'm in a bit of a rush to make this show and possibly because modern games have sort of unaccustomized me, I think that would be the expression, unadapted me when it comes to having games that not only not hold your hand but actively want you to go out and do stuff and look for stuff even if it means looking up uh, things in every corner possible of every room. Maybe if I was doing the show at a later time or earlier time when I could actually dedicate enough time to it, maybe I would have found it a bit more enjoyable. On the other hand, it may have been a uh, No One Lives Forever 2 scenario where the further I got into the game, the sadder it got. There was also combat in the game that's um, not great. It's really not great. Your characters can tumble around. They can also shoot things automatically if you're standing around and doing something while the characters are encountering an enemy. It's uh, sort of that... Uh, I would say... It, 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 it doesn't have a snap to cover mechanic, so it's already above Frank Herbert's Dune, but the shooting aspect of it is a bit at the same level as it, I would say. It's not, it's not really that great in terms of combat. It does, however, have story, and in terms of story, in terms of setting up the world presentation, it does a fine, amazing job. Just the intro, the intro where it just shows you a little girl robbing a teddy bear and shows you the teddy bear falling through well, the evolution of human civilization. From the highest towers, everything is beautiful and pristine, to ruins of the old world with a church. It sort of reminds me of the one from uh, Final Fantasy VII to deeper and deeper and deeper until it reaches the hands of something that doesn't look like it's human anymore. But the game does have characters in it, like you're 
four characters that you play as they do have dialogue and cinematics and up until where the point was that i quit uh they, they didn't really do much but it does have a story i've seen bits of the story i've read bits of it and it does develop into a seemingly interesting story that i kind of wish i could have enjoyed in the game not getting a bit of uh motion sickness from it on account of it couldn't decide on what monitor to run on and would switch constantly until i disabled one of them and then refused to launch because you couldn't find a rectx 8 video card and then the cinematics would constantly play even though i stopped them and they were in a different window and the game has a few issues, but it is quite playable. Also doesn't have a jump button, but it does sort of have jumping-ish puzzles. I think they were trying to move away from the Tomb Raider type of uh, gameplay, but uh, it still has Tomb Raider-ish scenarios in it. Looking at the reviews on GOG, I can see that a lot of people actually enjoy this game. And not having had time to finish it, I'm gonna give it the benefit of the doubt and say that I, I'm, I'm missing out on something that could be great, could be good, could be really nice, could, could be I've seen it compared to Anachronox, which well, <laughs> the characters do have their own mini games associated with their, their skills, which make the ones in Anachronox seem good. Th these aren't. But it has the same kind of quirky, I won't say quirky, but different aesthetic, different sensibility, different kind of gameplay, different kind of world, different different everything associated with it. So it does have that in its advantage. I'm curious how the game would have actually worked in multiplayer. I think it would have been a lot more fun that way. Perhaps Project Eden was a bit ahead of its time. It's back when it was released in 2001, the internet wasn't really all that, well, all that big compared to what it is today. It wasn't all that common, not everybody had it. But now I think it would have had a fairer shake, if you will. With four players, four people combining their noggins, I think I think it would have worked out better. If you're curious, you can absolutely find the game on GOG. Like I said, it's five euros and 20 cents. It's not that much. And at the very least, you'll have a game that is, even 17 years later, kind of nice looking. And it is one of the final games made by Core Design. Well, they did make games all the way up to 2005. The studio was closed down in 2010? Really? That late? What? Weird, though apart from some other Tomb Raider games, they pretty much made only two other titles that were not Project Eden. So if you're a fan of what the studio created, and it's a long, long history of 14 years, half of those being without Croft, well, you owe it to yourself to see what Project Eden is all about. Or you may just get frustrated like me and quit playing it because you have other stuff to do. Goodbye.